What is going on and welcome back into Bio Studios. Who's ready to make what in the studio today? Yes, an awesome clay and hand-painted microphone, but for who? Jigglypuff, the awesome hand-painted acrylic canvas. That's right, you heard me right. We're going to be creating a nice, awesome little microphone for Jigglypuff. Now, this is an entire series here on my YouTube channel. Make sure you check it out, whether it's at the end of the video or check it out now, and then come back into this content later on in the playlist. Now, we're going to start off by using Sculpey Original. We're going to take a small block of this here. My daughter is also to the side of me crafting as well, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a piece of clay and give that to her so she can have some fun sculpting as well. Anytime I can engage the kids in the studio, then I make sure to do so. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to create a nice little microphone here. Now, if you keep track of Jigglypuff's microphone, you know that it's very simplistic in a lot of ways. But what does it double as? It is a marker. Yes, if you can't sit through Jigglypuff's song, what does she do? She marks up your face. And by che uh, checking out the, uh, the thumbnail in this content here, you can see that uh, I may have fell asleep. I don't, I don't know. She may have got, got to me. So we're going to start off by going ahead and warming up this uh, Sculpey Original Clay here. We're going to go ahead and roll this out into a nice general shape of a thickness that I want. Now, I'm kind of trying to keep this in contrast to the size of Jigglypuff as far as the canvas. If I recall, the canvas was a 12-inch uh, round. Uh, and of course, we added a clay and hand painted that and maybe we already varnished it. Now, the varnishing technically is not coming until after this video content. So just be aware, we're not there yet. But we'll get there very soon. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this in, out here. I'm going to roll it out and we're going to go ahead and cut gently on both ends to kind of straighten those out just a little bit there. And I'm just going to kind of gauge how long I want the actual shaft of the, the microphone to be. We're going to go ahead and just give a general length here and we're going to go ahead and cut that. Now in the content uh, uh, of the animated series here, she has a marker uh, with a green tip. We are going to make a green tip, so we'll get to that later on in this content video. Uh, but at this point in time, I'm really just trying to get the overall kind of depth of the rod or the, the pin uh, uh, width that we need. So right now, this tube of clay is just very simplistic. We're going to go ahead and use the end of a marker or an existing marker just to give it kind of like an impression on the very bottom. Very marker-esque, as you would see. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, kind of mark that off there. I'm going to cut that so it's flat, and we'll come back to the tip of that later. Now what I'm going to use here, I'm using a smoothing tool here. It's just a wooden dowel smoothing tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll that on the edges of the, the round cylinder here. Uh, and this is going to allow me to kind of create some indentions. Now in the content of the animated series, if you look very closely, a lot of the times her marker will be black with silver inserts. So it has silver banding around the tops the middle and the bottom of the pen. Now there's a lot of times where it's just a black pen. And I think that's just because of the animators didn't want to animate it in or it's the distance from the the uh, the reference of the cartoon. So I'm going to make sure that ours has that silver indention and that's why I rolled it with the uh, uh, kind of smoothing tool there. So once I got the impressions into the actual shaft of the marker, we got the end kind of molded out how we want. It's very simplistic in a lot of ways, and that's the way I want it. I want it to look like a cartoon version of it. It's not supposed to be a, some realistic thing. Uh, now what we're doing here is we've rolled out a large piece of kind of a, a cap-like or microphone um, mic-like shape here. I'm just going to go ahead and just go with my, the flow here, and it doesn't have to be a certain shape or a certain size. As long as it has just like a, a generally thick end on it, uh, we're going to apply some textures to this um, here in a few minutes just to kind of give it a nice uh, type of like a fabric or a mite like fabric effect here. Now I do have that on the end of a ball stylus tool and it's just an easy way for me to go ahead and roll that around on the work surface until I can get the general shape that I like. Now, when I bake this, the actual shaft of the marker will fit into this groove where this ball stylus is sitting. I'm also going to use the tip of my fingers here to give it a few indentions along the way just to create some kind of age and decay and make sure it's not so uniform because technically, after all, this marker would have been in the field with uh, Jigglypuff throughout her life. Uh, and even if it's a different marker for the most part, the cap on it would be the same, right? Because not every cap or marker she picks up is going to have a microphone cap on the end of it, right? You would think? Is that something that they, they make? I don't know. Uh, if not, it would be in the animated series. She, she would be transferring this over to new markers. 
And as she follows Ash and uh, Misty and Brock throughout the animated series, she often has the same looking pen. Uh, so we want to make sure we can kind of cap capture that. Now, obviously, this cap is not going to be removable from the clay top or the shaft of the marker. No, it's not. But it's still very fun to be able to kind of introduce this into the actual acrylic painting. Uh, and it's just a nice little accessory into that clay structure. So as you can see here, I'm using the side of a, a sculpting tool just to give it a nice checkered uh, or hex uh, type of uh, pattern there. Uh, and I'll go back and forth until I get the general uh, look that I want. And then what we'll do is we will bake this and it will hold its overall structure and it will be waiting for us in the dry brushing process later on in the painting portion of this video. So here's our two pieces here. We're gonna go ahead and bake these at 275 for around 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, time is not a factor. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's not underbaked, we're good to go. So here's our two pieces here. We have the shaft with the indentions for the banding, as well as the little indention on the very end. Very cool there. Uh, and then we have the actual uh, mic topper there as well. Now, of course, it doesn't have to symbolically mean that there is a marker underneath it, but it's just going to look like it's supposed to when she's holding it and singing from it. Very cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the first portion of this video. Uh, now, as we roll into the second portion here, we're going to begin the painting process, which does take a little bit longer just because I like to build up quite a few layers and create some depth with this. Uh, and I'm really not removing a whole lot from this content. I just really hope that this is such a simple project here that literally anybody can pick up some clay, roll it out, and just have fun creating. Uh, you don't have to have a rhyme or reason. Now, we're only going to use a few different colors for this project here. We're going to begin by applying a pitch black to this yes a pitch black uh, and we're gonna go ahead and apply the first layer the first layer is always very thin when you go over it with um with a uh with an acrylic paint now not always but for the most part uh it is a very thin layer you can really see the clay popping through there and it kind of feels like it's very watered down even if we are pulling directly from the the, the paint there we're not adding any water to this whatsoever uh but you can see it just it goes on very thin now the goal here is just to create a nice little layer here and let it bond and then once this layer dries here then the next layer it will really start to catch a hold uh, of the existing uh, paint that you already have on there and you'll really start to build up your layers now like i said not all paint is created equal so some paint is, uh, sticks a lot better than others some paints will go on thicker some paints will go on thinner but either way i think that building up layers is very important when stuff like this because every layer that you build up it just adds more character to the item itself so as you can see here, now I'm coming in with a little bit more of a thicker brush stroke here. And I'm also making sure to go around the overall shaft here. Uh, and I'll sh say shaft until it becomes a mic. <laughs> because that's what it is, right? It's uh, the actual handle of the microphone uh, or the marker. And we're going to go ahead and work this uh, uh, pitch black all the way up the entire surface. Now, I technically did not cover the bottom. And I'll probably skip the middle band as well. Uh, now, you'll also think here, like, mm, well, you, you painted that bottom band black. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And I did that on purpose. I also wanted to create a band of black at the very bottom before the silver cap on the end of the marker uh, or mic yet because I wanted to have a little bit of diversity. I didn't want it to be all uniform and just have only the bandings be silver. I decided to make one of the bandings black as well just to kind of blend it out a little bit, make it, make it feel and look really cool. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and add some uh, some gunmetal gray in a moment, which will really start to make some of these portions, uh, these bands shine just a little bit. Uh, and then later on in the process, we'll start to introduce some of that sterling silver around the bands themselves. And that will apply a lot of shine to it. So we're going to have a lot of shimmer on the actual shaft. And I'm hoping that it contrasts very good against the pink body of the Jigglypuff, as well as the green marker cap. Next, we're going to pour out some hooker green here. Now, this all is from Windsor and Newton paint. Now, I started off by holding the actual mic topper here, uh, and then I decided not to do that anymore because I don't really want paint all over my fingers. And what we're going to do is we're going to stab that with a, a sculpting tool here, just a spiked sculpting tool, uh, like a needle tool. And we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, be able to hold that in place. I'll also be able to kind of shove that sculpting tool down into my rice um, brush holder and it kind of holds the item up vertical until it's completely dried for the next layer. I will continuously hit these both with heat guns as I move forward with the process uh, and it really doesn't take too awful long to create these two items. It's really not that bad and you just gotta hop between the two items as you uh, allow layers to uh, dry and then move back and forth. 
uh, once you get done completely with it you obviously need to give it quite a bit of time to kind of like cure up and fin finish drying completely um, but overall the process isn't that bad if a little bit of paint gets rubbed off because of the parchment paper then hey, it's no big deal here is that gunmetal gray now this is a folk art paint folk art gunmetal gray what an absolute brilliant color this is I've had this color for over a year now it is still going strong it lasts such a long time and anytime I have an excuse to use it I do next is the sterling silver also from folk art i really do like folk art with uh, when it comes to a lot of craft paints i like to uh, i'm not saying i'm a, a brand purist but i do really like the brand in general and i really do think that if i ever were to be sponsored by a craft style paint then folk art would have to be it i really think that they just have a really unique lineup of colors uh, not just the metallics or, or the, the the color shifting paints um, or uh, any of them in general that you could find. They have such an assortment. Uh, Apple Barn is a good one too, but for some reason, whenever I'm in Walmart or a hobby store, I always lean towards folk art. Uh, my hands will always just drip towards their brand, and I, I just really like them in general. As you can see, that sterling silver, we're just kind of being very careful to go over just the banding around the top. Now, that top banding will actually go into the actual cap of the, the mic there. The middle one is going to be very visible. And then, of course, the very bottom where that little insert is from the bottom of the marker uh, is also going to be silver. There's that black band there that we have already covered up just to create a little bit of diversity there. And I did get a little bit of silver on my gunmetal gray, but I'll do a little bit of detail work between the banding here in a little bit. That's just something small where you come in with a little smaller of a brush and then kind of in, introduce a little bit more um, measured uh, brush strokes there. Now I have two colors here. I have a pale olive as well as a turquoise. I believe it's a turquoise from uh, Windsor and Newton. Now I wanted to create that, that stereotypical like light green to blue cap that you'd see in in the actual animated series so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up these colors here now i did keep them separate slightly and i'm gonna do a dry brush here now i'll continuously introduce these as i go through the process and uh ever so often you'll see me hop over to a little bit more olive or a little bit more turquoise until i get the overall shade and the contrast that i want here uh, it's a very nice uh, overall color, and I like being able to contrast the colors against each other. But not just that, the, ba the background of that hooker green on the base of the mic looks really awesome, you guys. It looks really cool, and I'm able to introduce a little bit more of that, uh, that olive green towards like the top of the, the microphone there to make it look a little bit little more like worn or deteriorated, maybe from use or like uh, if it were to be dropped or something like that. So it's just very fun to be able to introduce some of that. I'll also do that with a little bit of the turquoise around the middle, around the edges a little bit here and there. Um, but it's really fun to be able to do the dry brushing. If, you, if you're never done dry brushing, make sure you get into it. It's just the easiest way to ever paint anything. Uh, and it adds so much character so quickly and it really just transforms how anything looks. So there we are. I'm very happy with how that's looking so far. And I may detail this a little bit throughout the process, but it's almost there, you guys. Look at that. It looks absolutely phenomenal. And it's just like literally no work at all to create, bake, and then paint it. And it looks so good at this point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and nitpick a little bit. I've uh, kind of uh, lessened the, the size of my brush there. And I'm really nitpicking over where I would like a little bit of the color to be. More so, this is just me not wanting to waste any paint. Uh, I have a tendency to put a little bit too much paint out, but that's just part of being an artist, right? And once it's out of the tube, you really can't technically put it back. So it is what it is. Here I am kind of nitpicking over some of those fine lines between the banding there. Now, I could have applied quite a bit of chips to this and scratches if I wanted to, to try to uh, incorporate more deterioration and grunge to it. But I just really decided not to do that. I decided to keep that kind of separate. And um, even though I could have made it a little bit more grunge and outdoors like it had been in adventures and the outdoors with a Jigglypuff, I decided to keep it more clean, lined, and simple. Looking pretty good, you guys. So there's that little base right there. I'm going to apply a little bit of gunmetal gray to the insert of that just to make it stand out a little bit. And then here we are. This is what it's going to look like. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and paint that bottom because I don't want any reflections of that white bleached out clay to be projecting down uh, onto that silver manding there. So I went ahead and painted that with uh, the same pitch black from before. It's all still wet because we did this all in one session. We're going to use a little bit of E6000. Actually, I poured more E6000 than I needed, so I have to do a little bit of cleanup work. 
yes very messy of me but what we'll do here is we're just going to go ahead and apply the actual shaft of the marker into the cap there and we're going to go ahead and apply a nice little bit of a, uh, of a twirling motion there uh, it distributes the the uh, adhesive around the shaft and it creates a nice little surrounding bond between the two uh, so what i'll do is i'll kind of weed out some of that excessive clay uh, that excessive glue there of the clay structure mixed up my words there uh, and then there you can kind of see it now i need this to hold steady here if it's slightly tilted or off center i'm not really worried about that it's no big deal uh, after all the the cap would easily come off so that uh, jigglypuff could mark up her victims when they fell asleep to her sleep song no i'm not gonna sing the song you thought i was didn't you you thought that i was about to start singing jigglypuff the song i am not doing that here you guys i am not making a fool out of myself even more than i already do <laughs> as you can see we applied a little rubber band there and it's just going to kind of keep that in place there i did edit out a segment here where that actually had popped off and the the cap went a flying don't judge me i'm not including it we don't need that in here <laughs> all right so as you can see here we do have the marker completely done look how good this thing looks yes jigglypuff not the marker but it's pretty good in overall i did go ahead and apply a gesso layer to that for a future video where we're going to be applying a nice charcoal sketch to the back of that very exciting but we're not focusing on that in this video you guys you'll have to check that out later on in the series but we do have a nice indention here in the actual hand of Jigglypuff and she's in an upward kind of like jumping tra trajectory there uh, and here is our marker there as you can see we can kind of lay it here now it is a little bit top heavy because of the mic tip uh, and it does want to lean forward there that is not a big deal but I do want this little band in the middle to kind of be at the top of her hand uh, I just want to kind of like have that upward a little bit so what we're going to do is apply just a little bit of E6000 not enough to squeeze out of the edges no not that much but what we do want to do is we want to make sure that it adheres quite well even if something were to happen in the acrylic paints were to peel up off of the clay we want to make sure that stays now i'm going to use this one pound yes i pointed the one pound block of clay here and what we're going to do is we're going to apply this uh, marker here and i'm going to lay this one pound clay uh, block on top of that it's going to hold it into place and we are letting it set up overnight so there it is just setting up all by itself alone overnight i'm not in the studio watching it at all <clears throat> wasn't i wasn't i wasn't there at all all right so here we are it's completely dried up and you can see there's not much spillage over the edges of the the clay there is a little bit but no big deal we are going to varnish this all together so the actual clay structure of the of the marker and the hand will be varnished together so we will add a little bit more strength to that overall bond between the the mic the e6000 and the actual hand of the dos air dry clay what do you think guys i hope you enjoyed it make sure you subscribe like and i'll catch you guys on the next video i think this marker really accents jigglypuff well later